Welcome back to the AI Breakdown. Today we are talking about something that is, on the one hand, one of the most anticipated pieces of news, and at the same time still hugely, hugely important. What we're talking about, of course, is the report from Bloomberg that Apple has been quietly behind the scenes working on its own LLM platform and chatbot, but apparently doesn't know what it wants to do with it. This comes from a Bloomberg scoop published yesterday called Apple Tests Apple GPT Develops Generative AI Tools to Catch Open AI. So here are the important details. First of all, Apple has built something that it calls Ajax. This is apparently a framework for creating large language models. And on top of Ajax, Apple has also created a chatbot that some people internal to that company have dubbed Apple GPT. Now, despite CEO Tim Cook's public comments downplaying any AI efforts, according to people with knowledge of the matter, this AI effort has become an extremely important internal project. One really key detail, I think, is that the people who were interviewed as part of this story say that Apple's AI work is trying to address potential privacy concerns. This would track with other Apple efforts that have consistently tried to position it as the most privacy-friendly big tech company. Now, it also sounds like from the reporting that despite all these tests, Apple really isn't sure exactly what they want to do with this technology. Despite that lack of clarity, markets simply didn't care. Apple's market cap went up about $67 billion in the minutes following the report, showing just how hungry these public markets are for AI competition right now. So how is the community reacting to this, though? One point that people are making is that this is very on-brand for Apple. Apple tends not to be the first to things. Instead, they try to be the best to things. As Robert Scoble points out, Apple always is late. Others have started to log their requests for what this might become. Bilawal Sidhu writes, Apple, for the love of God, please make Siri better. It's 2023 and the competition is miles ahead. I can barely use it to set reminders, let alone have a conversation. Yes, I want my own AI Jarvis, but I'll settle for parity with Google Assistant. AI developer HJ writes, most desired features for Apple GPT. One, offline capabilities. An offline mode that allows for basic interaction with the AI even when there's no internet connection. This would allow people to use the app in areas with poor or no internet connectivity. Two, contextual awareness, improved understanding of user context based on device usage. This would allow for better, more personalized assistance, such as suggested actions based on user habits or current location. Three, multilingual support, the ability to understand and respond accurately in multiple languages, providing assistance to users from different linguistic backgrounds. Four, integration with other apps, the ability to seamlessly interact with other applications on the iPhone to perform tasks such as sending emails, making appointments, setting reminders, and playing music, among other things. Five, interactive learning mode, a feature that allows users to teach the AI about their specific preferences, improving its ability to provide tailored assistance. Six, emotion detection. While this is a complex and ethically nuanced feature, detecting the user's emotional state could help the AI tailor its responses to better suit the mood or needs of the user. Robert Scoble tried to identify gaps that he sees in ChatGPT as areas that Apple could potentially fill in. He says, my thinking is that there are a lot of holes when you travel a lot and force yourself to use GPT for everything. It can't find me a coffee in SJC airport. It completely made up a couple of menu items in an Austin restaurant. It didn't help us enough with a subway system in New York. It can't tell you what the smoke in the sky is if something in your city is burning. It can't tell you anything interesting about real time. When is the fireworks show tomorrow night and where should we stand? Basically, what Scoble is asking for or seeing the opportunity in is what he calls real-world AI. But perhaps one place to look for hints about what Apple may be thinking is how they are using this internally. Going back to that Bloomberg piece, they report that Ajax was first created in 2022 as a way to unify machine learning development within the company. So far, they've made small AI-related improvements to products including Search, Siri, and Maps that are based on this Ajax system. And when it comes to this chatbot, what people have called Apple GPT, it was initially apparently rolled out at the end of last year by a very small engineering team. Now that rollout was quickly halted over security concerns, but subsequent to that has been extended. Interestingly, it appears that it is not open to all Apple employees and requires specific approval to get access. So far, according to Bloomberg sources, Apple employees have been using it in the product prototyping and design process. However, and this is important, Bloomberg writes, quote, Apple employees say the company's tool essentially replicates BARD, ChatGPT, and Bing AI and doesn't include any novel features or technology. The system is accessible as a web application and has a stripped-down design not meant for public consumption. As such, Apple has no current plans to release it to consumers, though it is actively working to improve its underlying models. Bloomberg continues, Apple is still trying to determine the consumer angle for generative AI. It's now working on several related initiatives. 
a cross-company effort between its AI and software engineering groups, as well as the cloud services engineering team that would supply the infrastructure for any significant new features. While the company doesn't yet have a concrete plan, people familiar with the work believe Apple is aiming to make a significant AI-related announcement next year. So what do I think about what Apple's most likely path here is? First of all, let's talk about whether they would launch a competitor to ChatGPT. The short answer for me is that I find it unlikely. Apple isn't so much in the business of standalone software experiences, particularly web-based software experiences. If you think about it, where would this live? Apple.com is effectively a store. It's not a content website. So it would represent something pretty fundamentally different for the company to create a consumer-facing web app, which leads me to think that if they were to do that, it would have to be predicated on having a really, really different approach. So far from this reporting, it doesn't seem like they have some differentiated feature or approach that would justify this shift. A place that seems far more likely is a radical overhaul of Siri, and specifically Apple taking on the idea that AI could be used to create the ultimate personal assistant. Other competitors in the space are clearly making a big effort on this sort of AI personal assistant experience. Just a couple days ago, Microsoft announced the pricing for their Copilot feature, and at $30 a month, it seems that they have a pretty strong assessment of how important it's going to be to consumers. So is one path for Apple's AI to be the power center for their entire set of hardware devices and software systems? A souped-up AI-powered Siri that can navigate between iOS, macOS, and other future hardware platforms? That's certainly something that would be in line with what Apple's doing now and where their core strengths are. Of course, bridging from that, the place where it seems most important to have a natural language input AI-powered interface is, of course, around the Apple Vision Pro. The Apple Vision Pro represents the most serious attempt yet at a totally different paradigm of computing that doesn't involve screens, it doesn't involve typing, it doesn't involve pointing and clicking. And given that the natural way to control this system would be speaking commands, having a deeply integrated Apple native AI system to control this just makes a lot of sense. However, to the extent that we are looking at an Apple entrance into the generative AI space that isn't just about impacting their hardware platforms, the key differentiation that feels possible to me is about private access to personal data. As AI Breakfast writes, imagine a language model that has access to years worth of your iMessage exchanges, emails, photos, and health data. Over the years, people have gotten comfortable with Apple's focus on privacy. They do have incredible access to information about us, information that we've shared passively and actively. If you look at the development of enterprise AI and enterprise LLMs, one of the key trends seems to be companies spinning up their own models so that they can train it on proprietary data without having to worry about leaks and platforms like OpenAI's GPT inappropriately or accidentally accessing their proprietary information. It is entirely possible to me that there is a personal consumer equivalent, where what people really want out of a personal assistant AI isn't some generic third-party platform that they sign up for and give information to, but something that sits and integrates deeply with the places that already have a lot of information about us. To the extent that that is a key AI-based consumer experience of the future, there's no one better positioned than Apple to take advantage and actually build that tool. Now, of course, ultimately, my guess is that we get some combination of all of this. I can't imagine a world in which a native Apple AI isn't powering their devices like Apple Vision Pro. I can't really imagine a world where AI doesn't totally reshape how users navigate iOS and macOS and all the other Apple devices even beyond the Vision Pro. And finally, to the extent that everyone has their own little Jarvis in their pocket, their own personalized AI system, I think no one is better positioned to bring that into reality than Apple. Obviously, all of this is for now some ways out, and so for the moment, we are left to just fun speculation. Thanks for indulging in a little bit of that with me today. Until next time, peace.